Hi everyone, in this lesson we want to look at how we can rationalize denominators where there's two terms. Now, if I look at this example where I have 3 divided by 4 minus the square root of 7, remember that we would like to get rid of this radical in the denominator, and perhaps the most uh, obvious thing to do first would be to just multiply by the square root of 7 over the square root of 7, like we did when there was just one term. But notice that if I multiply by this, just the square root of 7 over the square root of 7, the square root of 7, you have to multiply it by the whole denominator. So that's going to give you, you'd get 4 square roots of 7 minus 7. So you got rid of the radical here, but you shifted it over here to the 4, and you still didn't get rid of it in the denominator. All right, so that's not going to work. So what I need to do, instead of multiplying by the square root of 7 over the square root of 7, you might remember that we have a special product. If I multiply by what we call the conjugate of 4 minus the square root of 7, in this case 4 plus the square root of 7, then I get that special product that's the difference of squares. So in doing this, in the numerator, I would get 3 times 4 plus the square root of 7. And in the denominator, I would get 16 minus 7. All right, because I, I would foil these out. I'd get 16, the 4 times 4. And then the outers, the 4 square roots of 7, and the inners, the negative 4 square roots of 7, they'll cancel, because that's that special product. And then the square root of 7 times square root of 7 makes 7 that I'm going to subtract. All right, now you'll notice also that I didn't distribute the 3 through on the top. And the reason I didn't do that is because, notice here, 16 minus 7 is 9. And then I can, I can cancel the 9 with the 3 here. And so that's a, a good practice to hold off distributing the 3 through. Or maybe just leave it factored out if you don't need to, because it might cancel with something in the, in the denominator there. Okay. So I've got this in the numerator. I'll get 9 in the denominator. And then, because these are factors, I can cancel that. And my final answer for this problem uh, would be 4 plus the square root of 7 all over 3. And so notice that I did manage to get rid of the radical in the denominator. <clears throat> OK, so let's do, let's do something similar on this problem. I'd like to rationalize the denominator. I'd like to multiply by something that somehow get rid of both of these radicals. And I can accomplish that by, again, multiplying by the conjugate. In this case, 2 square roots of 3. Since this is minus, I'll put plus 5 square roots of 2. And if I do that in the denominator, I'll also have to do it in the numerator so that I'm really only multiplying by 1 and not really changing anything. All right, I like to put parentheses around each of these just to remind myself that I'm really going to have to foil this out. So when I do this, uh, let's do the denominator first, because that's really what I'm aiming for to get rid of. So when I do that, I'm going to get 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And the square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. So in the denominator, I'm going to get 4 times 3. And then the outers are going to give me 10 square roots of 6, right? 2 times 5 is 10. Square root of 3 times square root of 2 is 6. So that'd give me 10 square roots of 6. But notice that the inners give me the same thing, a negative 10 square root of 6. So they cancel. And then the outers, or the last ones, are going to give me a negative 25. And square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2, OK? So notice that I did get rid of the radical in the denominator. Now the numerator, that's something else. In the numerator, I'm going to get 10 times 3. Uh, so 10 square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. The outers would give me 25 square roots of 6. The inners would give me 2. I'll get a negative 2 square roots of 33. And the last ones here would give me minus 5 square roots of 22. All right, so my final answer here, I don't see anything really that's going to combine in the numerator. I'm just going to get the 30 plus 25 square roots of 6 minus 2 square roots of 33 
minus 5 squared to 22, all over 12 minus 50. Now 12 minus 50, that would be a <clears throat> negative 38. Okay, so again, notice I did manage to get rid of the radical and denominator, but boy, that sure messed up my numerator, didn't it? Okay, let's do the same thing now by rationalizing the numerator. Uh, same principle holds if I have a binomial. Uh, in order to get rid of the radical, I'm going to have to multiply by that conjugate. So in this case, I'll multiply by the square root of 10 minus 4 over the square root of 10 minus 4. That's what's going to get rid of the radical in the numerator. So that will give me, when I multiply it out, I'll just get 10 minus 16. Uh, I don't even have to worry about the outers and inners because I know since these are conjugates they're going to they're going to cancel. In the denominator I'll have to FOIL. I'm going to get the square root of 20 uh, minus 4 square roots of 2 minus 3 square roots of 10 and then I'll get plus 12. Alright so this is going to simplify. I'm going to get negative 6 in the numerator. In the de denominator I probably want to think of this 20 as being 4 times 5, so the square root of 4 is 2, I can write that as 2 square roots of 5, minus 4 square roots of 2, minus 3 square roots of 10, plus 12, and that would be my final answer. I don't see anything that will cancel out there, and that's all I have. Let's do one more here. Uh, rationalizing the numerator. This is a problem that actually comes from calculus. Uh, suppose I wanted to simplify this and what I could do is again multiply by the conjugate. In this case I'd multiply by the square root of x minus h plus the square root of x. And If I do that in the numerator I'll also have to do it in the denominator. Okay, so when I do this in the numerator, I'm going to multiply these two together. That's going to give me just x minus h. And then I know the outers and the inners are going to cancel, right? I'd get the square root of x minus h times the square root of x. And this is the same thing, but a negative square root of x minus h times square root of x. And then the last ones will just give me minus x, okay? Because the square root of x times square root of x is x. Well, that's really nice, isn't it? Because then I see this x is going to cancel that x. In the denominator, I've still got this h right here. And that's multiplied by the square root of x minus h plus the square root of x. Okay? So notice that that's going to give me, I can cancel this x with that x. x minus x is going to go, and I'll get a negative h here divided by, and I'll have this h down here, times the square root of x minus h plus the square root of x. All right? So let's uh, notice that I can then go ahead and cancel this h. I've got a common factor of h, and so my final answer is going to be a negative 1 divided by the square root of x minus h plus the square root of x. And I've succeeded in rationalizing the numerator. There's no more radical in the numerator. And in the process, uh, I actually got rid of this h in the denominator. It canceled. Okay?